It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. I am very pleased to welcome Nick DiVirgilio in for an interview, and I am very pleased to uh, to chat with him. Welcome, Nick. Thanks for being with me. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. All right. So, you know, uh, I have become a pretty darn big fan of of yours, and uh, I, I'm just really excited to have you on the show. I've got some of my favorite albums that have some of your playing on it back there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, big, big train. Ingenious Devices. This is a wonderful record, by the way. Thank I absolutely you. love you. it. Uh, what else do I got back there? Some Marillion, some Genesis, some Peter Gabriel, some more Genesis. I I, I know who I have in here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I uh, uh, we're going to talk about the new album from D. Virgilio, Morse, and Jennings. They put your name first, uh, which is very appropriate. And um, <laughs> But first, I want to talk it's, about... It's, it's... No, I would just say the name of the, the the band name. It's not the. It's like you know, how long can a band name be? Well, this is this has got to be up there with one of the long ones. Y'all, y'all should just say the trio, and and everybody. Well, that's knows. what Neil sort of called it, you really? know. And I'm I'm kind of referring, to it, yeah, and I'm referring it to to, to DMJ, you DMJ. know, a lot of the time. That should work. Well, yeah. let's anyway. Let's, yeah, let's talk about Neil. I recently did uh the light by spock's beard on uh on my channel i reviewed that and heard it for the first time and as i read in for that uh i read a little bit how you met uh neil and alan uh can you talk a little bit about that and how you met them and how you guys formed spock's beard i met them at a blues jam in la one night uh i think we were all a bit tipsy (laughs) <laughs> and I think we played Jimi Hendrix. I think we played Fire, if I remember correctly. But, you know, you go to a, like a lot of jams in L.A., you'd put your name on a board. And at a certain point in the night, they start calling people up to sit in. And mm. they happen to call me, Neil, and Alan at the same time. Really? And that was the first time we played. Yeah, it was totally, you know, faith by chance, however you want to describe it. And uh, we played. And then we exchanged numbers that night. And uh it was only a few days later, maybe the following week, I forget exactly, but Alan had put together this sort of networking musician, networking jam day okay. at a rehearsal studio in LA. And so I went there and uh, we played a little bit more seriously because we were sober. And, um, <laughs> but then uh, we were just talking and we, you know, we talked a little bit more than Neil said, look, I'm trying to find some people. I wrote this music and he had the light all demoed. Okay. And he goes, me and Al are trying to find some players to maybe play this music that I wrote. And that was the start of Spock's Beard. That's awesome. I said yes, and then we we were a band from that point forward. Were you on the on the drums that night? With the, on the, the drums jam? at the jam session? Yeah, at, yeah, playing drums. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. You know, I I fancy myself as a um, an air drummer. I need to learn how to play the set. Maybe I'll maybe I'll yeah. uh, get some lessons from you at some point. So yeah. <laughs> let's talk about uh, DMJ, D. Virgilio, Morrison Jennings. Uh, Troika last year was your first album. It was released in February. It was one of my favorites uh, last year. I really enjoyed that one. And now y'all are back with Sophomore, your follow-up album. It's due to be released via Inside Out Music on November 10th. So, uh, You've just talked a little bit about how you met Neil. How did the three of you get together and form this group? Um, it was Neil. I think it was Neil that called me first and said, "I'm. what do you think about doing something like this? Mm. But I'll step back for a second. Back in the day, in the early Spock's Beard days, me, Neil, and Alan would stay up like after shows in the early Spock's Beard tours. We'd stay up like all night long singing Beatles and CSN tunes and Yes, I mean, and always harmonize, and those guys could play all night long. Mm. So we've kind of had this in our blood for many years, and he's been doing it with him and his family forever too. For sure. So Neil, so I mean, I have a, Neil, you know, wrote and called me and said, I have these tunes, and I'm thinking of maybe trying to do something, see, you know, vocally, the three part harmony thing, and and stuff. What do you think about doing it? And I said, Yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. And then it was like, Well, who should we get as the third person? Mm. And we, you know, we rambled around a few different ideas. And then um, I'm pretty sure it was Neil that thought of, of, of Ross initially and uh, reached out to him and 
Ross was into it and sure. we kind of got some, started talking to get some ideas going and it just sort of fell into place really. Wonderful. I read that y'all didn't have the opportunity to sing together in the same room during the recording process, at least of the first album. Was that the same uh, for a sophomore or did y'all finally get to yeah. get together? The only yeah. time we've ever sung together in the same room is when we got together to record the videos, the videos. The little, two little music videos for the new record. Yeah. Uh, Ross had just finished playing uh, on with Haken in Chicago. He was finished the American leg of their tour. And then flew down to Nashville, and I'm not too far from Nashville, so I drove down. Okay. And we made those two videos, and then did uh, performed a little. We were like together. We go, we got to sing. Mm. We can't be here and not do anything. So we did one of the tunes from the record as a little pseudo live performance in the room. That's the first time we've ever sang together in the same room. What did that feel like? Um, you know, you've got. Uh, oh, I've great. done. I've done some recording, you know, and vocal recording and all that in the past, and it's a solitary thing if you're by yourself. You got to trust that you know it's all going to fit together in the end i can't imagine what it's going to be like hey this is what we actually sound like it works amazing yeah um yeah it was super comfortable and very easy i mean yeah it was those guys are incredibly talented musicians and yeah. and singers and it was it just fell into place well, immediately how does the song selection process work you're all great uh, singer songwriters uh how uh, how do you go through do you just pitch song here's one of mine here's one of mine and and just the may the best song win how, how do y'all uh go through all that well after the first record you know we we the first record sort of had you know three of my songs and three of ross's tunes and four of neil's just kind of worked out that way but okay. um once we had that we knew that that formula off the first record it worked so well that's sort of the same formula we we're going down for this one too. Hmm. Knowing that we all three of us were going to write, it gives the record nice flavor, a little bit of diversity and sound and, and a little bit of style, you know? So we went with that same mindset for this record. So I knew I needed at least three or four songs and same for Ross and Neil's always has, he probably has like a thousand songs just sitting in the, in a hard drive somewhere that sure. no one's ever heard yet. So, um, <laughs> Uh, so that kind of thing. So we it kind of went down with that same that same idea. Wonderful. We so, started sending demos to each other. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's an amazing process. Uh, uh, Anywhere the wind blows was the first single. I have listened to that and enjoyed it with some of my patrons. Uh, the latest single is called "Tiny Little Fires," and you know, uh, I was enthralled. Like in the first eleven seconds, uh, there's some meter some some prog happening in that uh, metrical structure who came up with that lick I love that's a ross it. tune that's a ross yeah, tune. that's a ross song yeah and he uh he came up with that line that you hear on the on the glockenspiel xylophone kind of sure. thing uh, sitting with his baby playing on a ba on a on a little child xylophone <clears throat> and that riff came out and he decided to write a song around it yeah, uh, I think I heard it as uh, like 13 uh, in one bar and then 14 and then back to 13. And then it was like, I think 16. Um, I don't know. How do you count that? <laughs> how do you feel it? It's like, it's like a measure of four, four plus like five little quick notes. Yeah, it's thir 13. If you count it fast, it's 13. One, yeah. two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 one, two, three, four, five, was um I, i've i've had access to a promo version of the uh, or, or a you know of the album uh linger at the edge of my memory am i right yeah. that that was one of yours yes i thought that i heard your voice lead on that and i think it's one it, i think it's one of my favorites on the album so congrats on Thank on you. that one um do you ever, uh, when y'all bring your own uh, songs to each other, is it, okay, my song, I'm singing lead? Or, uh, no, this will be better for Ross, or this will be better for Neil? And how do you decide who sings what part? Because you and Ross have overlapping ranges, I think. We do, and which is great. It makes it makes makes arranging fun and 
knowing that I don't have to always sing the high parts is sure. really cool, actually. Um, in general, yeah, the person writing the song is singing the lead, but it doesn't always have to be that way. I mean, the song that's on the record called Mama, Everybody's Taking a Lead Line. Um, it's, I mean, with the, we could do it really, there's no rules. We can do whatever we want. It's just sort of, I think what's happened on the first two records so far is that Neil's singing lead on his tunes and I'm singing lead on my songs, but that doesn't mean it's going to be that way forever. It's just sort of like how it's kind of fell into place for right now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites from the previous album, Troika was, uh, what we leave behind. I think it was the last song on the album. Um, it's so poignant and, uh, you know, y'all's sound has been compared to groups like uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash and other sort of three part harmony things. Do you have some some favorites in that style that, uh, you know, you've been listening to for years and years, uh, some influences in, in that singer songwriter style? Well, them for sure. CSN big time. I mean, mm. I've been singing and playing along those songs since I was a kid. Hmm. for sure and like i told you me and neil and alan used to sing those songs all the time uh so you know any lots of beatles some of the early yes stuff with all their harmonies um you know i i love that kind of thing um so you know all of those things are definitely into seeped into the blood here and uh it's a great way to kind of get those in those um influences out for I've heard sure. a couple people thinking they hear things that are sort of Doobie Brothers esque and stuff, and I think that's great because I love all those kinds of things. I'm a fan of all that music, so it's it's a nice it's a nice outlet for those styles and influences to come out. It's uh, it's such lovely music, and uh, I was I was surprised too that Ross, you know, being the the lead of a um, like a progressive metal style band, which I've seen them twice now. Um, uh, he's got such a clarion uh, voice. All three of you, it just kind of matches really well. And so I'm really looking forward to when the album comes out and sharing it with uh, all my friends because uh, I, you know, I get to listen to it now. I was talking to some of my patrons earlier, and they said, "I'm jealous. We want to hear it now." <laughs> like, well, we got to wait a little bit. So I also want to talk about Big Big Train. I have been doing. Uh, the Daily Doug for a couple of years, and I got to tell you that BBT is one of my favorite finds. I haven't uh, reviewed a lot of the music on uh, my own channel because I'm listening to it on my own time. And, um, you know, th I think the first song that really grabbed me was The Florentine. And okay. uh, to hear you and, and David singing uh, that, uh, it's a cool track. I also love Voyager. Uh, the band has announced that y'all are going to be playing uh, Cruise to the Edge in March of, of next year. So that's exciting, although I yes. don't have tickets, and uh, I've heard that it's sold out. So maybe I'll get on the wait list. But uh, are y'all thinking about playing any other uh, shows in America once you get over here? Yes. Yeah, things are being worked on. Nothing's announced. Nothing's announced. But definitely, we can't. Come all, they can't come all this way and only do one thing. So, yeah, we're definitely working on stuff. You know, before David passed, we had a full, and the pandemic and all mm. that shit, we had a full tour, U.S. tour plan. Oh, really? We, like, I mean, we had like 30 shows booked, I mean, all over the States. And mm. and so we were really excited about finally getting the band to this side of the um, of the world. Because, I mean, I'm always flying over there and we're always playing over there. So it's we were finally getting to the point of coming this way. Then everything happened, right. of course. And uh, now um, with Alberto in the band, the band just did our, we did our big, uh, our first, our biggest European tour. We just mm -hmm. finished very successful. So um, yeah, we're fine. We're really trying to expand the reach of this band. We're excited. You know, it's a, it's, it's an exciting project. And I, you know, I'm, I'm super happy that we're finally playing the cruise. It's been yeah. a long time coming for that gig. And um, since they're going to be over here, we're trying to figure out, how to do some stuff while we're here. So because of that, and it got uh, postponed, uh, the, the band hasn't been to America yet, right? It's just performed no. in, in Europe. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Wherever you, if, if you get over here, I'll see if I can figure out how to get there <laughs> and, and right. see y'all. Uh, I have seen you perform live though. Uh, you, you probably don't know this. You, I'm sure you don't know this. I got to see you perform with Steve Hackett uh, last, uh, December as y'all came that through New so Jersey. 
I know, uh, or I've read about how you're such a big fan of Genesis. So how did you get caught up with uh, Steve for that, for that leg of the tour? Um, well, I know his, his, his main drummer, Craig Blundell, mm -hmm. um, had, uh, he's in also in a band called Frost and they had a big thing coming and it just, the, the, the schedules were on top of each other. And I've known Steve for quite a long time and I've played on a bunch of his records, you know, spot songs here and there. And, um, we've sort of kept in touch over the years. Craig wanted to see if it was okay. Cause Craig's had that gig for a long time and he doesn't want to lose his gig sure. for for four shows with frost, even though frost is his band as well. So, you know, it just sort of all worked out where yeah. I was available. They reached out to me. Would you be able to sub for Craig for a few shows? And I go, are you, and playing seconds out, which is a record. I mean, I literally played to that in all of those records, like every day as a kid. So I, I knew all of this music. It wasn't like I was going in knowing it. I had to like hear all of this stuff for the first time. Right. I, I still know every lyric. Just about every drum fill is still in my hands. All of that kind of stuff. My, so it was like, yeah, this, oh, this is incredible. My favorite part of the show was Supper's Ready, you know, and there's Nad singing away and doing a brilliant job. And there is you back, you know, behind the kit, just with the, even from the, from the second deck, a smile from ear to ear, just, just singing like, I bet you're singing right along with, you know, it, it, oh, yeah. it, it was so endearing to, to watch y'all play. And Steve puts on a great show. He really, really he does. does. He's incredible. Yeah. He's really so cool. that was a real cool bucket list sort of dream come true sort of hmm. thing to do. I, I can't thank Craig enough for allowing me to play his drums and, you know, having me be the guy to, uh, you know, keep his seat warm while he, he was away doing his other things. So I appreciate yeah. it all. I lot. know Frost. Please. I've listened to some of their music as well. There, there are uh, lots of great bands uh, out working sure. today. So I've got um, Selling England by the Pound. Their seconds out. I've got some of those out. I've got some other Genesis albums. Do you have a favorite Genesis album? If you had to pick one, uh, that's tough. If you had, to that's pick tough one. to answer. I like so much of it. I mean, I still think Selling England might be my favorite. If I had to choose one, like a yeah. bucket list. The lamb is right there close. Um, gosh, I love, I mean, I like a lot. I think, and then there were three, I think is a, uh, I've got that one. Is, too. That's one of my favorite records they've ever done. And it's one of those, like not all the fans love. And then there were three, mm -hmm. even I hear the guys in Genesis even say that it wasn't their favorite thing. Cause it was such a transitional thing, but I think they rocked on that record. Awesome. And uh, so I'm a big fan of that. Uh, there's so much great stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to pick. It is. Um, yeah. Sorry for the question. <laughs> It's like it's all right. hey, pick your favorite <laughs> right. kid. Um, the uh, so uh, going back to Big Big Train, uh, what's the status of the new uh, record? Is it still being uh, recorded, or have y'all wrapped on it? Um, what's the yeah. what's the scoop? Record is done, and it's being uh, mixed and tweaked and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they're you know working on the you know the release day, and so all the announcements will be coming out pretty soon about what's happening with that. But yeah, Excellent. that record's in the can and it's uh it's cool there's a lot of great stuff there for sure so uh, just the difficulty the thing that i wanted to ask you about just from a performance standpoint um how do you uh or how difficult is it to maintain uh breath support for your singing while you're expelling so much energy playing uh, I've tried to, uh, like I play keyboards and singing along while you're playing keyboards, doing two things at once is not an easy thing. And then you're singing and doing very well at it while playing some pretty complex rhythms. Uh, what's the, the, the physicality like, uh, d does it wear on your voice, uh, being behind the kit versus, uh, not being behind the kit and, um, you know, just talk a little bit about the experience of being a vocalist and a percussionist at the same time. Uh, well, yeah, you, I mean, it would be, e it's easier to sing when you're just singing, obviously, you, you know, you can just concentrate on that and not have to worry about it doing anything else, but it's amazing what the brain will do. You can have four things going on at once and sing at the same time, but there is some, there's things that can make it easier. There Good technique as a drummer and good technique as a vocalist really do come into play here. So if you if you're breathing correctly, if you practice these things, some of this technique, it'll really help you uh, prepare for what you're singing. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you don't expel too much energy when you have to do something hard. And, and so it's, it's just a matter of doing it a lot and really working on technique. I mean, technique is, uh, uh, great for anything you do musically, no matter what instrument you play and your voice. So, but a lot of it does come down to breath control, I think, especially playing drums and singing. Yeah. So learning how to breathe, working those lungs out, um, sitting up straight, having good posture, all those things really help to keep the lungs open. So you can have a nice big breath when you got to sing something high and you have to try and stay relaxed. So you're not, you don't, it doesn't make your voice waver because you're like moving around. You got to sort of, all those things just kind of come with practice and um, it can definitely be done. Hmm. I was just watching, speaking of that, Hmm. um, I got, I'm doing, I'm working on some stuff for drums and voice some educational stuff. And I was out there doing some research and you ever heard of the drummer Dean Castronovo? I've heard of him, but I, I don't think that I know his work. He's been the drummer. He, I don't I think he's back in the band now, but he played with journey forever and right. uh, bad English and a lot of other bands. And he's an amazing player cool. and an incredible singer. Um, and if you want to just go and watch some YouTube live stuff, the audio may not always be great, but just listen to him singing lead. The guy's got an angelic voice while he's mm. playing drums. He's one of the great guys who to ever do it from behind the from the drum chair. Um, and so it can totally be done. Just technique helps, um, relaxation, learning how to breathe correctly, which will help you singing whether you're playing an instrument or not. That's huge. So um, just those kinds of things really yeah. help the whole, to help it all, yeah. Excellent. Well, coming full circle with D. Virgilio Morrison Jennings, um, <clears throat> you know, I was asking for a while to see if if all three of you might be able to join me for a conversation. I think getting all three of you in one room, it's hard enough to get it for your own uh, recording <laughs> as as well as an as an interview. Will y'all have a chance to to do any performing, public performing, uh, now that there's two albums out there? Yes. <laughs> I'm saying yes, whether they've said yes or not. Cool. Um, I'm gonna no, everybody knows my, I, I've been, uh, I'm beating this drum hard. I really want to take this on the road. Yeah. And so Neil and Ross both know my, my feelings about this. Yeah. Um, I think it would be a great evening of music. So yes. hopefully it'll happen sooner than later. I mean, Haken has got a busy schedule for a yeah. long time. They're touring up well into next year. I obviously have Big Big Train and the band Mr. Big I'm playing with now yeah. for the beginning of the year. So there's a lot of stuff we have to work around. So it's just a matter of schedules coming together. And I think the guys want to do it. We want to do it. And I think it would be a really fun thing. So Stay somewhere tuned. down the line, yeah, this will be a live, a, a live band. Well, yeah. I I really appreciate you taking time today to to uh, to chat with me. And I've I'm uh, very uh you know, I very much enjoy the have enjoyed the new album, and I will continue to enjoy it. D. Virgilio Morse and Jennings, you're out with sophomore, uh, your follow up album to Troika, and it's going to be out uh, and available everywhere on November 10th. Thanks so much for uh, yes, for sir. joining me today, Nick. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, man. All the best. All right. See you soon.